Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the spell Watery Sphere. All right. No, that one's we tried. Uh, I, I choose to believe that there's some viewer out there, uh, at least one person that gets a kick out of those. Anyway, uh, Watery Sphere is a fun little spell for Druid, Sorcerers, Wizards, fourth level, cast half an action, 90 foot cast range with a five foot radius area. Neat. Concentration a minute. Um, you conjure a, a sphere of water. What a surprise. <laughs> uh, at a point you can see within range, the sphere can hover, but no more than 10 feet off the ground. Sure. Uh, the sphere remains for the spell's duration. Any creature in the sphere space makes a strength save. On a successful save, a creature is ejected from that space to the nearest unoccupied space of the creature's choice outside of the sphere. Basically, if it enter, if, if it goes into a creature's space, if it fails the strength save, it's yeeted to a space it wants to be. A huge or larger creature automatically succeeds, and the larger or smaller cre creature can choose to fail it. On a failed save... A creature is restrained by the sphere and is engulfed in the water, and at the end of each of its turns, a restrained target can repeat the save, ending the effect early on a success. You basically get a little containment bubble that you can choose to have creatures... Creatures can choose to get locked in if they want to. Um, the sphere can train as many as four medium or smaller creatures, or one large creature. So you can get, like, four kobolds, you can get two humans, two kobolds, four goblins, one ogre. Uh, if the sphere restrains a creature that can is causes it to exceed the capacity... A random creature that was already restrained falls out and lands prone within five feet of it. As an action, you can move the sphere 30 feet in a straight line. If it moves over a pit, a cliff, or another drop-off, it safely descends 10 feet at a time. Any creature restrained by the sphere moves with it. You can ram the sphere into creatures, forcing them to make the saving throw. When the spell ends, the sphere falls to the ground and extinguishes all normal flames within 30 feet of it. Any creature restrained by the sphere is not prone whenever this happens. The water then vanishes. Um, this requiring an action to move around really hamstrings it but my god do i love watery sphere <laughs> this might be the worst spell that i really love it's very fun it is not particularly efficient nor effective but i have done some dumb shit with watery sphere and i will do more dumb shit down the road with it because it's just a lovely time yeah it feels really i mean yes it is very silly but uh i don't know maybe a little bit effective i mean it's I mean, it's kind of like oh, I know you're gonna you're gonna hit me for saying this, but a like a poor man's banishment. I it, it's only, if you ever can get restrained three things with this, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and if you're doing it as a fourth level spell, like the core issue with it, the difference, right, is that banishment puts it away for good. This it, it, so banishment's like a if it fails, it's gone for good. Watery Sphere is, if it fails, it can get out still. But then yeah. you could recapture it. So you get this little, like, mini game where you're like, get the ball. And you just keep, like, <laughs> smacking the same ogre with it over and over again. And you keep like, no, I don't want to be in here anymore. <laughs> um, you get this, this fun little back and forth. I think Poor Man's Banishment is pretty apt. Um, it's just that, like, Banishment is consistent. It, well, it's consistent in the way that once it happens, it's going to do the same thing every time. Watery Sphere is not. Watery Sphere is going to be a little hard to deal with, controllable minigame where you're throwing this ball of water around trying to keep something <sighs> occupied that's very crucially eating your actions. So if you're, like, trading mm. actions as opposed to spending one action to eat all of a creature's actions, there's a pretty big difference between those two things. Um... That being said, I think this is way more fun than um, banishment. <laughs> <laughs> this is way more fun than banishment. This is super fun. Is it one well, another notable thing? It, it only lasts up to a minute, so you're not going to drown anything in this. No, which is I guess, uh, unfortunate. Yeah, I think every everything that exists in fifth edition can breathe underwater for a minute functionally, and then you get an extra minute for every con score you, or every plus one con mod you have, and it doesn't go below zero. So, like, if not you, breathe you underwater, like just hold his breath. Yes, hold your breath for that long. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. So you, um, no, you're never drowning anything in the water. The water no. speed. Um, so how how are you using this? Are we, I mean, you you've had some experience with it. What, yeah. what what do you do? Um, we so we didn't have Featherfall at the table for some reason. I'm pretty sure I was a druid at the time. Pretty sure. Um, and it's really fun just because there was a cliff, and I was like, okay, everyone get in, and we made the bubble, <laughs> and all four of us got in the bubble, and we went away over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Um, there are also windows where, like, um, it restrains you. So the restrained condition, uh, your speed becomes zero, attack rolls have advantage against you, and your attack rolls have disadvantage, and it has disadvantage on deck saves. 
there aren't a lot of reasons to want to go in the watery sphere. Um, but if you do go in the watery sphere, you can get in kind of like a punch out with other things in the watery sphere, which I've had happen where like the barbarian, I we put something in the watery sphere and it started attacking things outside the watery sphere. So our barbarian dove into the watery sphere to start punching the thing in it and they were at parity in there. And it was entirely pointless. They could have just been on the ground punching each other at that point, but it was fun. Um, yeah. It was funny just to see them floating 10 feet above the water and this barbarian and this uh, troglodyte are just whacking the shit out of each other. It was a great time. Um, you can also, like, I love using this like a monkey ball. Like, the you just, you know, the monkey that's like rolling around like a hamster ball and slamming into stuff. Well, you you just take this ball and you slam someone into it and you slam into something else. Like, you slam into something else and you're just trying to pick up creatures and move them all around the battlefield. Very fun. Not particularly effective. It's something you do like once a campaign because it looks like a good time, not because it's like doing anything productive. But it is like it could be effective. I mean, if you if you move how? them somewhere they don't want to be or where you want them to be, they're they're either in range of your area of effect spell that's going continuously, and they escape, and oh, now I'm in, entangled, or there's they they fail and they're stuck in the watery sphere, and you can shoot them with advantage. Sure. Um, that requires a lot of setup. And at the table yeah. I was playing in, I definitely seen, didn't see that much setup for it. Like, when I said I had fun with that, I cast spell like three times. Um, <clears throat> it's still... For all of the hoops you're jumping through for a fourth level spell slot to move things into an area, you need them to start failing sequential strength saving throws. You have to spend actions on multiple turns doing that. Right? You need to action collide it, get them there. Action to move it with them in it. Yeah. And that puts them in the position you want. You're spending two actions to move somebody 30 feet. I don't love yeah, that. Not great. But it's also yeah. restraining them. So you you can be denying melee attacks. You're forcing them to make strengths at the end of their turn. Maybe they're trailing a bunch. Maybe you're having a good time. It might be trading actions for actions. Not the end of the world. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, the... I don't know. The, the restrained condition feels pretty good. That's like a... I won't, I won't say it's a hold monster good, but... um. You know, if if you've got you know weaker creatures that uh, are in the bubble, and you got a the rest of your party wailing on them, then uh, get some mileage out of that. Yeah, it seems fine. Uh, it's like restraint really is just like grapple plus. Their speed zero, and everything attacks them with advantage, and they have attack at disadvantage, and creatures have, they have disadvantage on deck saves. So it's like you could set up fireballs and stuff with this if you really wanted to. Um, you could just fireball instead. Um, yeah. this is the kind of thing where like you. You could, the like, if the best of the spell is, I capture that medium creature, I capture that medium creature, I capture that medium creature, I capture that medium creature. You spent four rounds restraining four different medium creatures that are failing a bunch of strength saving throws, and I have to wonder how relevant those creatures had to be if they're still failing yeah. strength saving throws <laughs> round after round after round, right? Like, are you just, like, taking the little minion kobolds with three HP each and just sticking them in a bubble for no particularly good reason? Like, that's, I mean, that's a way you're allowed to spend your actions. No one can tell you you can't do that, but I don't know how effective that is. Do you... You, I think maybe there's going to be more circumstances where you get like one large enemy that you're just trying to restrain over and over again, and even if it breaks free, you're like, ah, fine, whatever. Back in the bubble you go. So you spend an action in restraining it. You hope it fails a save or two, so you can cast spells at it and get everything its advantage and all that fun stuff. And then if it breaks free, you can be like, back in the bubble, get back in the bubble, and you try to whack it in again with the bubble, try and get it back in. You can kind of get in this like little loop that makes it a reusable restraint condition, which is not nothing. That's probably worth casting sometimes. I'm not sold. Like, I think hold monster for an extra spell slot level higher than this is way <laughs> better than this. Um, at least in that specific use case. But like, it's not as fun. And it also, you know, it costs a higher level spell slot. So that's fair. Yeah. Um, restrained does not prevent you from casting spells, right? Nope. Yeah. So, well, there's a uh, being underwater say, kind of does. Does it? I uh, I don't remember if being underwater how it affects verbal components. Um, but I'll check real quick. But you have something else to say? I was thinking, uh, you know, wizards don't typically have a great strength score. That's you, true. Uh, scoop up the wizard, then uh, if it imposes any kind of penalties on them, then uh, or I mean, you scoop up the wizard. At least, yeah, you know, everybody gets advantage on attacks against him. If he's got any concentration spells going, they're then, going uh, down fast. Yeah. Uh, it does specify while submerged underwater and holding its breath, a creature can cast a spell that requires a verbal, smash, a spell, a verbal component with a casting type of an action, reaction, bonus action, or action. After casting it, it immediately runs out of breath and it can survive a number of rounds equal to the constitution modifier. So basically, no, they can't cast spells while underwater. They require verbal components. So that's well, they can't one. <laughs> yeah, they can. They don't want to, but they can because yeah. they can. Then they'll start drowning in your watery sphere, which is funny because <laughs> you can actually. This is a real case where you can drown somebody in your watery sphere um, if they try and cast a spell in it. So that's neat. But if it breaks your concentration, they're probably happy with that. Yeah. 
All That's right, a real well. use case, though. You just, I didn't think about that. That is, like, you can put the spellcaster in the bubble. They can't cast spells. You pull them towards you. They're restrained and all that fun stuff. They were more likely to fail the save. Against spellcaster, like, it's being quite good. Its range being 90 feet. It's pretty big, too. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel good for thinking of something useful for once. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes they're great ideas. They're just not always like great. <laughs> great ideas. They're great ideas. It's like you know what I'm talking about. Fun ideas. <laughs> yeah, fun ideas. There we go. That's what all right. Well, I stand by that. Um, uh, you got anything else to say, or just what you want to rate this one? Oh, uh, let's just rate it. I think this is probably a three. I don't think this is hurting a lot of people. I don't think this is crazy game breaking encounters. I think you're gonna have fun with it. I think you're gonna be effective enough. I think, again, like, being able to re-restrain one thing is fine. It's not better than the other kind of conceiver dies that we got going on at this point. It's probably not better than, like, uh, Hideous Laughter or anything like that. But it is more flexible than Hideous Laughter. You can throw it around a bunch of different things. Like, let's say you restrain one thing, kill it. Restrain another thing, kill it. Over the course of a fight, that seems fine. Um, for how fun it is and how much fun I personally had with it, I'd recommend playing with it. I think it's a great little time. I think visually it's very clear what fantasy is happening here and it does it in a really fun like really flamboyant way of big bubble of water smashing into stuff and throwing them around the battlefield mm. it costing your actions a big deal though so um if you don't if you want to play like a character that isn't necessarily power gaming isn't necessarily trying to be like i've done the high damage thing already i want to support the party in a more fun manner this spells right up your alley and i would recommend it every time yeah three sounds about right for all the reasons you said um yeah not gonna reinvent the wheel there all right, that was Watery Sphere. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.